I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but uh, we're giving it a shot. We missed last weekend. The weather's not, I mean, the weather's a little better, but uh, it's not as perfect. The water, at least this time, is uh, it's a, it's a decent color. Where before, two weeks ago, it was like coffee. We got a strong southerly wind today, and uh, I got an idea what we're going to try. I hadn't fished this a particular section of this ever, so it'd be a, an adventure. I've been watching it. Now here in this creek where it pours into the river here, I saw a bunch of activity and it was definitely, let's say small trout, top in the water or pop in the water, chasing bait. Now, the water was off color because uh, it recently rained, I guess probably early this morning. And uh, it's, that comes right off the, the uh, Feels, I guess they're growing Milo or cotton, whatever. It's probably too early, so it'd be Milo. Uh, and so it was, we weren't sure that the fish could actually see our lures because it was pretty darn muddy, but they were definitely active and, and they, you know, they, there was nothing you know, moving towards the lures at all. The wind was, oh, it was, it was pretty tough. I, the trolling motor was really struggling, and if I hit anchor lock, it overcompensated trying to to set the. When you hit anchor lock, it it immediately thinks that that's the point. So if you're got forward momentum, it's going to reverse pretty hard. Well, the problem is, is when it reversed pretty hard. The wind was also pushing it, so there was a lot of ground to be lost there, and and uh, it, the anchor lock in that situation with all that wind just wasn't working that way. Well. I hung around that mouth of that that uh, creek there for quite a bit of time, and uh, finally ended up thinking it was time to move on. It kind of it's hard to tell, but you see the activity, and you ain't picking up the bites. You could maybe change lures and see if that that works, but that all takes time, and and uh, I just made the decision to go ahead and and keep on moving forward. All right, we're going to fast forward here. And uh, there's a spot up here where I do see some activity with a, I think it's a trout. And, and I cast over there, I actually get a bite. But I was just kind of it letting you guys know it's not, it wasn't a great day to, to fish. It was pretty, pretty high winds. And, and uh, it just what really wasn't, a, you know, one of those days that, uh, well, okay, I'll put it this way. The only reason I went out there because I needed content for a YouTube video. That, that, otherwise, I wouldn't need gun at all. Look at that right there. You see that? I had a bite. I was going to try to take a picture of those ducks, but now with that stupid bitch there. Now with those people worrying about what we're doing. What uh, you see often distance there is a, 
a boat ramp out there, and, but the, the walkway to the boat ramp goes over a creek, and it kind of cuts into the shoreline, and there's an island. Well, maybe not more of a peninsula, because it doesn't come around, and, but you can see it as you go over there, that it almost cuts back into the river again. And uh, the bat, I mean the uh, bass, <laughs> the redfish are really working it up back in there. And I've never fished this area and, but I've seen other boats do that. And I did see a lot of activity. All right, from the lessons learned here, is I, I want to hit the anchor lock and fish, fish that little cove there. So what I'm doing is I'm working the remote to slow my progress, forward motion progress down. And once I get it down slow enough, I'm going to hit the anchor lock. That, that should prevent the motor from swinging around and say oh i gotta stop on the dime right here and then the wind kicks it back another 10 feet and then it just really get, kind of gets lost at that point he's lost all control over it i'm gonna take a picture of the bird but the anchor lock hadn't been working very well today because it's overcompensating That little uh, <clears throat> splash in the water there, it was definitely redfish chasing mullet back there. I really can't quite reach that area, and uh, I'm kind of scared to cast into it because it seems to be quite shallow, and there's a, a lot of the trees and tree roots sticking through the water there. Man, I see the fish working back up in there. Yeah. After spending more time back in here, 
fishing this little cove area. I decided it's about time to move on so we can at least get a bite or two. Look at that fish over there. God damn. I'm gonna sneak in. Ah, I can't do it. Oh, come on. Is it gonna let me get a picture or not? Overcompensating. Get one? All right, GoPro, start recording. GoPro, start recording. Oh, it's a big red. Still not tired yet. Okay, go ahead and put the net in the water. I'm gonna try to get his head up and bring him over to it. Okay, here he comes. All right. All right Good boy. job, honey. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday. All right. <laughs> and I think he's gonna be a keeper. We have otro aquí, mira. If you get jumpy. All right. He's a good one, three spotter too. Three? Yeah. 
GoPro, stop recording. Remember. All right. Now I got a measuring. Yeah, I'll push that down. Huh? Okay.
Well, that's good. <clears throat> it's always good to catch a nice red fish, but especially nice when it's your birthday. <clears throat> Huh? Well, we're going to be doing the kitchen cook today, and and uh, I got the redfish from yesterday. And uh, I got it in the cooler here. I usually put my fish in a plastic bag, and, and I'm talking about a kitchen garbage bag, to keep the slime off the, the inside of the cooler. Uh, I keep my fillet knife and gallon bags in the back of my truck. So if I do clean the fish out there at the, at the uh, boat ramp, then I've got everything I need. I got the boat cleaned up this morning, flushed the engine. Now we're gonna fillet my fish that I caught. All right. It's the next morning and uh, we're gonna do a catch and cook now I wanted to start doing these and and uh, this looks like a good opportunity to go ahead and start one up I caught I did catch one redfish yesterday and, and incidentally here's a tip if you don't like cleaning shit the slime out of your cooler is uh, before you put the fish into the cooler, put them in a little trash bag, either kitchen size bags, and uh, fairly du durable, and uh, what makes this, uh, I'll end up putting the uh, bones after I clean them back into this bag and uh, then I'll take them down to the river there and dump them out and throw this bag in the trash but mm, a lot of times when I come back from fishing it's, I try to be home before dark and if I had to clean a bunch of fish I run the risk of not being here before dark. It's kind of hard to back the boat into the driveway. It's 
Uh, two spots, three spots. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's a tournament winner, but it's pretty. I I started using an electric knife to get the initial cut on these redfish because they're pretty tough. Try to get that major bone whack out there. I'll start using the knife here. Yeah, flame carefully along the backbone. In the middle of this, you see there's a ridge, so you gotta dip it that side down that ridge there and get as much meat as possible. I kind of missed it a bit there. You always want to, this meat here can kind of taste a little fishy. So if you want good fish that doesn't taste fishy, take this out. I've seen you know, a lot of people do do this. Except maybe not in your fish markets. But the guys who catch their own fish, they do it. Fish markets might not do it because of the they sell their fish by the weight, by the pound, and uh, you know, that's money out of their pocket right there. They, you can take it home, cut it out yourself, and they still sold it to you. <laughs> that's not funny, is it? It's more truthful than funny. A little ridge bone in there, it kind of keeps you from getting that in there. Now 
we'll be frying these today. So I'm going to cut them up into chunks. Good clean meat there. Alright. Pretty sure I can put a plastic bag in my pocket somewhere. There it is. Alright. I picked this one up. taking the throat and honestly you can see meat here meat here <clears throat> I'll get that meat but the throat part where you got the fins that's a pretty tough area really hard to eat so I, I typically don't do the throat per se as everybody else does I will take this meat off the bellies and I'll uh, flay it up and keep it but <clears throat> I don't literally cut out the the throats.
That'll go to the, the river here in a bit. I live pretty close to it, so it's not a major thing. And incidentally, if you need an apron and you want your uh, logo on there to kind of support, you know, if you're a YouTuber or you support your channel or if you got a business, you know, whatever, if you need a need an apron and you want it customized, look me up on the internet, royalriverrat.com. Google it, it'll come up. I take it back down to the river is because it becomes food for the fish and other creatures that live in there. Including the alligators. <laughs> There's not too many alligators that are back up in here, but I have seen some. It's mostly after a big flood when they get come up the river like that. Some of them may be washed down. I kind of cube these up in a sense that, you know, so you don't have a big, deep, thick chunk to uh, cook. A big, thick ch chunk helps them cook all the way through better. to you once I get the cooking set up. Stop recording. All 
All right. We got our fire get started up here. I remember one of the YouTube tubers I watched. He used to do catching cooks. He had a he lived on the Key West, and he, I guess he rented a little spot from somebody, and, and you know had a little backyard. And, and the barbecue pit was probably something to get from Walmart. But man, he could really cook on that thing. I really enjoyed the the rustic type cooking. And, and I picked it up myself too. I, I use these solo stoves. I got a big one for a fire pit over here. And then I've got this little one I used to cook on. I also got a Traeger grill, which is pretty nice too. But today we're gonna be using this. All right, it looks like it's starting to catch fire there. All right, I usually just put the top on to accelerate the heating process. Looks like we still need a little bit more to go, but it's getting there. Uh, what do you think about my oven mitt? Huh? Uh, now, Basically, any, any seasoned French fr uh, fish fry you, you like. <clears throat> and uh, typically I get Zatarin's, but uh, we had this in the pantry. And I added a little bit of Zatarin's uh, blackened season. I like my food, or my seafood, spicy, Cajun spicy. And uh, I don't know, it's, you can see it's kind of a, cornmeal flour mixture this, it might be a little bit more on the cornmeal side than the flour i didn't read the they can the, or the uh, ingredients here really but i've eaten it before and i know i enjoy it now i will go inside and get the fish all right i threw a pinch of the seasoning in there and it looks like it, the fire is hot enough now. The grease is hot enough. The oil. Uh, there we go. Dip these in the seasoning there and drop it in. There we go. And it is seasoned enough. All right. This one looks ready. These are they'll float when you <clears throat> they'll be floating. Those two are floating, but I, I'm still gonna wait for them to darken up a bit. And the the bubbles won't be quite as much either. This this piece here was a lot thinner. Ooh.
And when I drop them in there now, they, they sink to the bottom when they first start. Does smell good. And the old Emerald Lagasse used to say, smell a vision. If you could just smell it. This thing, this one is ready right here. Yeah, I like the crust on that one a little bit better. Lawnmower with a big noise over there. I guess it found a weed or something. Tough piece of something to cut. That's ready. Alright. Nothing floating in there right now. Just get a little bit hotter here, putting the top on. <laughs> See, we've got more bubbles now. A pretty thick chunk over there. Alright. Put the top back on there. What's in there now is some pretty thick ones. We'll heat up that grease a bit. Keep it going. Yeah, my lawnmower is like a a drunk guy driving a car through a cornfield. <laughs> it just drives around and keeps going until everything gets cut. Or close to it anyway. So you can see out there in the spots that he ain't got yet. But it's good enough for me. <clears throat> He's been running for a couple of hours too. I just raised the blade on that thing. And uh, that's why you don't really see it cutting. I had, for the hose over there on my water system, 
I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I had to dig it up and, and rework it. And I didn't want him to cut the hose. So even though I did dig it down, I was a little worried. So I raised the blade up from two inches to three. Put those in and make sure these things are done so. I actually have one of those electric fryers. But that's not as romantic as cooking over a flame fire out in the backyard. Right? But they do a good job quickly. Yeah. Level, level still. All right, we'll just go ahead and get these last few In the batter over here. Take a look at it again. Oh, yeah. See, that's Being what we need. Actually, it's Super Bowl weekend, and uh, my son's got a low country boil set up, and I was going to bring this fish over there. Just, it, and we don't need it, but but I'm going to bring it over there just to kind of add a little bit of variety on that. But uh, yeah, we're going to be feasting here in a in a bit, and I will take pictures of us eating it over there. So we get the heat. It's one thing about cooking like this is that that charcoal burn down 
and get further away from the heat source. I could throw some more charcoal in there, but I think we're just gonna make it by the hair of our chinny chin chin. Only because we got the top. If you ch if you were having to do this without a top, then you would probably need to, in a bigger skillet, you'd probably need to put some more uh, charcoal on there. And then you could use wood or anything. Uh, charcoal is kind of convenient. I do, when I trim my trees I've, back here, I do keep some wood. And uh, it's always nice and handy to have wood around. We'll go ahead and put these in the bowl. Line with paper towel. And believe it or not, I like to put these in the refrigerator, let them chill down a little bit. It, it, you know, my wife doesn't, so she would eat hers hot. But, or I would eat it hot too, but like I said, we're going to bring this over to my son's house. There we go. All right. Let's see what this thing looks like. Oh yeah. Looks like it needs a little bit more time, but it's pretty close. Keep that heat up on there. GoPro, stop recording. All right, let me straighten this out a bit here. Got a little bit of mess going. Oh yeah, that is good. Yes sir, indeed. Oh yeah, perfect coloring. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, so we, we got these cooked. Uh, it looks pretty good. And my son just got off the phone with him. He's He's got the crabs. He's going to clean them first and then boil them. Uh, I particularly like it do it that way because the seasoning gets in, you know, inside to the meat a little easier. Had it both ways. I like it both ways. But my preference is, is that I get them clean before I put them in the pot. All right. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the kitchen cook. Uh, if you get a chance, go to royalriverrad.com, check out the stuff I got. Got some kitchen stuff, pot holders, I got all sorts of stuff, cutting boards. I can customize any image you want on there. And uh, until the next one, have a good day. GoPro, stop, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording.